Super Test Challenge. What was my VO2 max score? That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Hachiak Takamiya. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. Okay, so I have been talking about Norwegian 4x4 protocol, yeah? And now, this is supposed to be good for your VO2 max, yeah? To improve your VO2 max, yeah? And what is VO2 max, yeah? And that is the maximum amount of oxygen your body uses during exercise. It is a crucial indicator of cardiovascular fitness, yeah? Now, because cardiovascular diseases are one of the most common causes of death, yeah, among senior citizens, therefore, by improving your cardiovascular fitness, basically, you improve your health span, yeah? And according to Dr. Peter Atia, high bo 2 max contributes more than any other factor to the reduction of all-cause mortality. So he thinks this is the yeah, best indicator of your health and longevity. Yeah, He also thinks strength is very important too, but the bo 2 bo 2 max comes first and strength comes next. Right. Okay, so uh, I have been you know, taking measures to improve my VO2 max, such as, you know, doing zone two jogging. Well, recently I've been doing this kind of a Norwegian four by four, which cycling, yeah? So, but I've never measured my VO2 max, yeah? I'm not really into measuring, but actually it's not really, I'm not into measuring. It does like, I don't have devices to measure. I, I don't have a smart watch or anything like that, yeah? And you can have your VO2 max measured at a facility somewhere, but that's kind of a troublesome to do it, right? So I haven't measured it because I haven't had the opportunity to measure it, yeah? But now there is an easy test you can take, yeah? And you can do it yourself. Yeah, you don't need to go to a facility or anywhere to, to do that. And that is called super test, yeah? Now, so the Cooper test, the name Cooper, that sounds familiar, yeah, because it is developed by Dr. Kenneth Cooper, who is the father of aerobics. Basically, he's the one who kind of invented the term aerobics, yeah, and he kind of, he's the first advocate of the aerobic exercises. I remember reading this book back in 1970s, because I think I may have told you before that when Jimmy Carter came to Japan, and that was in 1979, yeah, he went to jogging at one of the parks in Tokyo, and that was yeah, covered in the media like every day, yeah? And then the jogging became a big boom in Japan. So basically, Jimmy Carter brought jogging into Japan, right? And around that time, this book was published, or this book was sold anyway. It was a bestseller. So I remember reading it, yeah? And then, yeah, I became interested in aerobics and I started doing it. I mean, of course, before that, I was always doing something similar, but we didn't call that jogging. We, we called it running, yeah? <laughs> right. So I was doing running, but... I started jogging, yeah, around that time, yeah. So, yeah, Dr. Kenneth Cooper, yeah, I, I know, I, I remember, yeah, reading his book a long time ago, right? Okay, so this is his test, Cooper test. So how to do it, yeah? So how to perform a Cooper run test? Now, you can actually do a walk test or, you know, you can do it with a cycling or anything, but I just did a run test. So I just go through how to do with a run test. Yeah. So first you warm up with some right jogging and dynamic movement. Yeah. On a flat, hard surface, ideally a 400 meter track, mark a clear starting point. You should know the distance you will travel by completing one lap one lap or back and forth to the starting point. If on a track, keep in the same lane for the test duration. S start a stopwatch at the same time you begin running and count each lap you complete. 
stop after 12 minutes recording how many laps you achieved. Then walk to cool down for 10 minutes. For details, please go to this website and you can check how to do it. And then if you are using other methods than running, it all explains in this website too, right? Okay, so I tried doing it and then see what happens. Yeah, there's a park called Matsuo Park in our town. And there is a running track. You see the red line? Yeah, that is a running track. So if I run around it, I can measure the distance. So it says 240 meters. The red line is 240 meters. Yeah, so uh, if I measure this, I can do the test. So that's how the park looks like. So that, that is the running course. So I can start running here. Yeah, so I did it. Yeah, it was very hard. Actually, I haven't run with that speed for a long time. When I go like jogging, I usually run much slower pace. So yeah, it was the first time in a long time that I kind of continued running with that speed. Yeah, like for 12 minutes. Yeah. And then, um, so back in high school and junior high school, I remember running, you know, like 2,000 meters, yeah? And I was pretty fast, yeah? I was always number one in class, yeah? And I kind of did it somewhere around seven minutes, seven minutes and something. And I don't remember exact second, but seven minutes something, yeah? In my junior high school and also in high school too, yeah? And uh, so based on that kind of calculation, I figured out, so because 2,000 meters, right? Seven minutes, 2,000 meters. So, so that means if I do 10 rounds, 10 rounds of, you know, 240 meters, it becomes 2,400 meters, right? So I thought maybe if I aim to do it about 12 rounds, 12 or 13 rounds, maybe it will be the kind of roughly the same as the time I used to have uh, in my teens. Right, so I try kind of aiming around so 12 or 13 rounds, yeah? But I ended up just doing only 10 rounds, exactly 10 rounds, yeah? So that means 2,400 meters in 12 minutes, yeah? In some ways, I was disappointed because I was faster. I was faster in my teens, right? Of course, I'm 62 years old now. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous to compare your, you know, aerobic endurance, you know, uh, from the teen, from the teenage time. Yeah, but still, that was my last memory. Yeah, I told you, I haven't run with this kind of speed for a long time. And the last time I did any kind of a race type of running was back in high school. Yeah, so that was my last memory. So I always connect with that memory and my, my feeling, my sensation. And I could tell I was much slower, you know, because I tried to run with a sort of similar pace and I just couldn't continue doing it. So after the third or the fourth round, I got tired and it was very difficult to maintain the speed. Yeah, also when I was in junior high school or high school, it was a race. So I had a competitors too, and it was easier in a way because I always had a, I had a strategy that I kind of a, first I go into the top group, of course, but then I don't run the top. Yeah, I always run next to the top person, and I follow the top person all the way until the last round. Yeah, and the last round I pass the person, and then run as fast as, as fast as I can and then go. That was my strategy to win the race. Yeah. So I could always pace 
that pass on. So it was kind of easy to, you know, pace yourself. But this time there was nobody. So I had to kind of uh, control my pace uh, myself. So it was uh, more, more difficult. So what does 2,400 meters mean? You, you know, I mean, so how, how good is running uh, 2,400 meters in 12 minutes, yeah? Let's check the result. So there is a, a kind of a, there's a slide to do this kind of curation, which I'll actually put the link in the description box below, yeah? So you enter your information. I'm 62. Well, actually, I'm technically I'm 61, but I'll be 62 next week. So I'm almost 62, so I kind of put this number, yeah? And then 12 minutes run, and then I chose meter. You can cho choose kilometers, meters, you know, miles and stuff like that. So meters and 2,400, yeah? And then, so that was my BO2 max, yeah? 42 something, yeah? And so for this age group, that was excellent, yeah? Which is the best, uh, rating. Yeah. Now, so in case it would be different, I checked with the age 60, age 61 as well. Yeah, I entered 61. And then, yeah, BO max doesn't change because, you know, th this is basically 12 minutes, 2,400 meters. That's the same. Yeah. But a score changed. So the, the last time it was 91, score was 91, but now it's 90, but still the excellent rating. So whether it is 61 or 62, yeah, it, it is pretty good, right? But this is something I expected, yeah, because um, I've been doing this zone two jogging for a year now, over a year, and um, and I'm pretty fit for my age, generally speaking. And then I was already fast runner. I was already fast kind of, a, you know, 2,000 meters runner back in, you know, my teen time. So, yeah, it's not a surprising to see this result, yeah? But I'm still not completely satisfied because it is much slower than my high school time. Yeah. So yeah, this will be my goal, really, to, to regain that endurance again, to just to get back to the bo. Uh, you know, because I didn't measure my bot max then, so I don't know. But then, then the speed, I, I can kind of uh, tell the speed. If I could run two thousand meters in seven minutes, something, then that means I, you know, regained that strength. Yeah. So my goal is to, yeah, do the same course, but next time do it 11, 11 round or twelve rounds, like aiming to do fast aiming to do 11 round, yeah? So maybe I'll do the test again in three months time or something to see, yeah? Um, but then, yeah, it's good. So I have a goal and then I can uh, train uh, for that goal. Right, okay. Now, the best way to improve your VO2 max is Norwegian four by four, yeah? Or something similar like doing a high intensity training for three to four minutes and then with three to four minutes intervals and do it four times. This is considered to be one of the best methods to improve your VO2 max. But also doing zone two training is important. And Dr. Peter Atia says 80% of the time should be spent on zone two training and then 20% should be spent on this like a Norwegian 4 by 4 type of high intensity exercise. Yeah, so that's what I will do. Yeah, I will continue doing a zone two jogging and then maybe once a week, I will do a higher intensity training. Yeah, to see how much I can improve my VO2 max. Yeah, now, by the way, for those of you who find Norwegian 4x4 too difficult because it is difficult. It is extremely hard, yeah? I've made a video to find some easier ways. Yeah, the title is Norwegian 4x4 Made Easier, Blend Workouts Into Your Day. So please watch that video and find the exercise suitable for you. And if you're interested in biohacking based on Japanese natural health, please read my book, Ikigai Biohacking. 
Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Sachi Takamiya, the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. If you like this video, please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my channel and please leave your comment. Have you ever measured your VO2 max? Yeah? Or how did you measure it? Did you take a Cooper test or any other method? Please share your experiences in the comment section below. Thank you. Well, I will see you in the next video. Live with your Ikigai!